in this short clip, I want to address the question, how do you detox copper? There is a lot of misinformation being spread out there. Online social media groups, just take this, just take zinc, just take zeolite, just take this magic, you know, potion, uh, one size fits all to detox copper. And this is not how copper toxicity works. I address this question. I do give you general considerations and guidelines on coppertoxic.com on the detox and healing page. There's also the full library of education and support resources for you to help you understand copper toxicity at coppertoxicitysupport.com. So to begin, there is no one size fits all approach that is going to work for everybody. And this is why when someone says just take whatever the magic potion is, it can be very misleading. It might help one person while making somebody else 10 times worse. And I see this all the time when people come to me because they've listened to something online, social media, wherever someone said, take this. And it's not meant for their mineral profile, their condition, their symptoms, their body. So let's go back to the basic, you know, uh, basic level of detoxing. Number one, we need to have excretion happening. So if you are dealing with constipation or your bowel movements are not at least once per day, there is an impairment of things leaving the body at a very basic sense, right? And that includes copper. The primary route of copper excretion is bile, which then goes out through stool. It is not zinc. I, I see, I've heard people say, just take zinc. It's the only, it's the, the thing to do to detox copper. No, number one, support excretion, okay? So supporting your liver, supporting bile production, supporting motility. That's where things begin. Then we can go into the designer supplements, or not designer supplements, but targeted supplements specific to copper. However, there is the caution that just because you've had, let's say, a copper IUD, and the symptoms developed after the copper IUD, which makes you think that copper toxicity is the culprit, I can guarantee you that there is always more happening than just a copper imbalance. I mean, I've worked with thousands of patients over my career. I mean, I teach this stuff to practitioners, and I've seen this more times than is necessary to know that there is always other imbalances happening. My clients range from the sickest of the sick to even elite gold medal champion athletes, and everybody has various imbalances. So to think that copper is the only imbalance is wishful thinking. So this is why when you hear these approaches to just detox copper, take this to detox copper, or heal your copper, it's missing so much of the bigger picture. There are always other things at play. I'll give you the analogy of a set of dominoes. You know, if you have copper as the first domino, copper falls over and it knocks all the other domino pieces over. If you are focused on just trying to heal copper, detox copper, yeah, you might, you know, somehow fix that copper issue, but you're ignoring all of these other pieces that have fallen over in the process. Copper affects calcium, magnesium, B6, zinc, manganese, molybdenum, and the copper IUD is also not the only contributing factor to copper toxicity. So let's go back. How do you detox copper? Supporting motility excretion. Yes, if you have an obvious source of copper exposure, such as the copper IUD, it would make sense to remove that copper IUD, of course. It's, otherwise, it's one step forward, one step back. What is your diet like? Are you on a low zinc absorption diet, for example, vegetarian or vegan? Okay. In that case, you're probably getting enough zinc, but the absorption is subpar. Likewise, most people have low hydrochloric acid production in their gut. That's further going to impair the assimilation of nutrients, including zinc. So there might be work needed to support the gut. Again, if you are vegetarian or vegan, likely you have low taurine intake. Taurine is, a, is one of the sulfuric amino acids, which plays a key role in the excretion of copper and bile production. So again, taurine, sulfuric amino acids play a key role. Magnesium and retinol are very important because they support the bioavailability of copper. 
Keep in mind, though we think of copper toxicity as copper is only bad, that is not the case. Copper is an essential nutrient. We don't want to be trying to pull all the copper out of our body. That would be foolish. We want to also be supporting the availability of copper. And most people with copper toxicity do have some degree of excess and deficiency at the same time. The analogy would be you're in the ocean, there's water all around you, you're dying of thirst, you can't drink the water, right? There's lots of it, but it's not available to you to use. And the same thing with copper. There can be lots of it in your system, but it's not available to use. So here again is the danger in these one-size-fits-all approaches. Just take this supplement to pull out copper. Well, if you already have a deficiency of available copper, you could be making things a lot worse by lowering what little copper available you do have. This is where having HTMA data to go off of, so you understand what's happening with your copper, so you understand what's happening with your broader mineral system, now you can create a customized program to address the various imbalances beyond just copper. Let's say, for example, there's also a mercury condition going on, which is very common. Well, if you have mercury, that is going to be impairing your zinc. If you have low zinc, that's going to allow for increased copper uh, absorption, increased copper accumulation. So you want to be addressing the mercury as well, right? It's never just about copper. So I would really encourage you to look at copper and your symptoms as an individual thing and not get hung up on these suggestions to take zinc or take B6 or take vitamin C because even though all three of those nutrients I just mentioned are typically helpful with copper toxicity, for some people they can backfire. For example, if you take zinc and that zinc releases mercury, more, more mercury into your system, you might feel worse. So Again, please, please, please don't get caught up with these one-size-fits-all suggestions. Work with a practitioner who looks at your situation, looks at you as a bio-individual, unique person, does the proper testing through HTMA so we see your full mineral system and your toxic metals, puts a protocol together for you based on not just your test results, but also listens to your symptoms and then addresses you, like I said, as an individual. So coppertoxic.com, detox page, general guidelines, and copper toxicity support with a wealth of information for you to learn from. And then go forward, proper testing, proper protocols, looking at you individually.